Cheating gets all the hype but what are some things that are actually more harmful to relationships in your experience? Hi guys, please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Resentment is the number one killer of relationships, as far as I'm concerned. It festers underneath the skin in a way that other problems don't. By the time resentment is expressed, the damage is already done. It's insidious, because it often starts so slowly. She gradually takes on more and more of the cleaning while he plays video games until one day she wakes up screaming and enraged that his socks are on the floor. He slowly loses his hobbies, his video games, his identity to his wife until one day he wakes up and rips the TV apart with his bare hands rather than watch the notebook. Before you know it, that grand and consuming devotion you had five years ago has been suffocated under the weight of towels on the floor and hours lost to bed, bath, and beyond and no one noticed until the peaceful deletion throws lying and hiding things i hid some drinking from my ex-wife because she had a dad that was peacefully deleted from alcoholism she hid smoking from me because i had a mother that smoked constantly during pregnancy and after and most likely caused my respiratory issues our reasons for lying were both to protect the other but both caused relationship problems instead withholding affection some people need it others don't function well without it staying in the relationship out of familiarity and convenience not because you actually love your partner ignoring her for days at a time constant lies when she tries to escape from the attic being constantly standoffish the mundane small ongoing day and day out issues can wear down love anything that makes living together a constant argument for example money a thousand times money arguments about money are the most common between couples it's really difficult to live with someone who makes you feel constricted and guilty about every needed purchase, triple checking you got the cheap brand toilet papers. Or flipping the coin, someone who spends your shared resources frivolously and wants to go out multiples times a week and buy expensive things you can afford, and pouts when you disagree. Housework. It is very grinding to live day in day out in a mess, or otherwise being the only one to clean up. Mismatched ideas of tindiness can make shared living hell. Imagine a roommate who always left his dishes to mold and left his dirty socks on living room floor. Now try to imagine after cleaning up his mess multiple times a day, feeling overwhelming desire to kiss that roommate. A bit difficult, no? Flipping the coin, someone who nags you non-stop about housework and makes faces if you forgot to put your shoes in place after a long tiring day of work can make it super unpleasant to be at home. P.S. I would add lack of trust, lack of communication, emotional distance, taking someone for granted, stopping to take care of yourself physically, mismatched ideas about children, and mismatched romantic desire. All harder to deal with in a one-time cheating episode. <laughs> Deleting younglings, disliking sand, turning to the dark side, and force choking your wife. <laughs> Condescension. Cheating is a one-time thing but has some deeper implications, but my suggestion is constant. It makes your self-esteem poop when you start buying their BS. My marriage ended in large part due to that and I was a confident guy before her, but berated into feeling like I'm worthless. <laughs> Cell phone addiction. This is so important. Those tiny computers can be so helpful, but two hour car rides with very little response from your so because they're too busy on Facebook can become intensely frustrating, to say the least. My boyfriend recently had to downgrade his phone due to monetary issues and honestly, losing that iPhone has done amazing things for our relationship and our communication. <laughs> Jealousy. It is a horrible emotion. Not saying goodnight and I love you. Especially when it starts happening out of nowhere. Open relationships. They almost always fail. A witch of a mother-in-law. Putting your own needs first, always. I had an ex who was very, very insecure. He needed constant reassurance, via romance, and me prioritizing him over everything else in my life, that he was the most important thing in my life, even over myself and my health. I needed space, sometimes, both as a normal human being who needs space sometimes, and also as someone with mental illness and previous trauma. A lot of the time his need for reassurance was deemed more important than my own personal boundaries, and I would end up having to do things I didn't want to, lest I suffer the emotional fallout. My response to previous trauma became worse, because romance became this terrifying obligation, and I thought he would hurt himself if I didn't oblige, or if I left. I would freeze up if he touched me in case he wanted more and that made him more insecure that I didn't want him. It ended. Messily. I don't think insecurity inherently is a relationship killer, but you need to know how to handle it, and how to handle it if you duck up about it. When one stops putting in any effort into the relationship. They stop eating healthy, get lazy. They get complacent with work and lose their drive. There is getting comfortable in the relationship, 
and there is completely giving up with the assumption that someone loves you no matter what. If you don't respect each other anymore, people can fall in and out of love, but if you lose respect for someone it's very hard to get that back. Also I think it can very easily lead to cheating. I love my husband, but I also respect the hell out of him and the hard work he does for us, and I know that he has a mutual respect and love for me. Waiting until you're fed up and angry about something before you tell your partner that something is bothering you. My ex-wife and last GF did this and it was one of the major factors in the end of both relationships. Our marriage counselor specifically talked about this but I think it was too late at that point. One time I was able to discuss it with the GF and talk her down off the ledge, I told her she needed to bring it up before she got angry about it but her response was she wanted to choose her battles and didn't want to become an egg. While that's a valid point, she was only looking at it as two extremes and wasn't able to find a middle ground. Like hey babe, I feel that you're talking down to me a little bit right now, before it becomes an issue, so I can check myself and pay attention to how I'm talking to her and nip it in the bud. Once I become aware of my behavior I can actively work to avoid that. If I don't know I'm doing something that bothers her then I'm probably going to keep doing it. Then when she is finally fed up enough it's a major blow up and usually over something stupid that could have been resolved amicably had there been communication over it, 